Greetings, this is Citizen Kong. Well, on this video I wanted to share with you a, uh, a story. I heard an interview with a man named Robert Putnam on the uh, Guardian Unlimited podcast. And I went to the website and I, I made, I downloaded, there was some of the, the page on there. And this guy Robert Putnam has written a book, uh, well, he wrote a book called Bowling Alone. And he's come out with some more articles lately. And this book, Bowling Alone, is basically about the trends in the United States of uh, people not being joiners like the way they used to be. Uh, they uh, they uh, don't join clubs as much as they used to and uh, don't join bowling leagues, hence the, the name of the title, Bowling Alone, as much as we used to. Um, in the UK, they're especially interested in what he has to say about this because the problems they've been having with uh, with ethnic diversity, an influx of immigrants, and they're looking to him and to us, the United States, as maybe a model for, believe it or not, for accepting people of uh, different uh, races and creeds and languages. Um, you wouldn't think so by listening to some of the stuff that's been uh, going on. Uh, Robert Buchanan, uh, not Robert, Pat Buchanan, talking about uh, losing our cultural identity, etc., when he himself uh, his forefathers were Irish immigrants, um, but um, but that's one of the things that Putnam points out is that Americans were so good at it uh, because we came up with this cultural identity that is not like your race or your creed or your religion, but to be an American. Um, he does talk about there's a negative side to, to uh, diversity. And um, he said that with higher diversity in a neighborhood, the lower the levels of trust, lower political participation, and the happiness between and within the ethnic groups. He calls it hunkering. He said that even like if you took a neighborhood and a bunch of uh, uh, Latinos and African Americans moved in, the whole the whites even tend to mistrust other whites and so everybody closes in so there is a downside to it but it is it is interesting um, I mean I myself have uh, grew up in a diverse community um, my my parents didn't have a lot of money so um, uh, that's where we tended to live and and my parents uh, both uh, my father was born in the US and my mother was born in Mexico, um, but I don't. I speak very little Spanish, but uh, if any. But um, I grew up in a in a border town, and I've seen border stuff. And uh, when I was hanging out at the um, the uh, local junior college, and I was taking a photography class, and uh, the guy teaching the class was very involved in uh, border issues. Uh, uh, he was with a group called the Border Arts Workshop. Now, I they were a little too radical for me. I mean, they believed in a completely open border, and I, I don't really see that as, as practical. But I went down to one of the protests uh, to observe. And um, what was going on is there was a local radio talk show host, Roger Hedgecock, was uh, doing a thing he called light up the border and the idea was to get all these people line their cars up and shine their headlights on the border to try to scare the illegal aliens from crossing there and this is this is long before they built the fence and everything and um, and it was interesting I mean both sides were lined up along this dirt road and I uh, I was walking between the two groups and um, I'll have to say if I was going to choose a side, Roger Hedgecock's crew were a bunch of angry old white people. And they were, they were just nasty. And uh, the, um, the other side, of course, was a bunch of uh, long-haired, unshaven oddballs, you know? White guys with dreads, black people, Hispanics, um, and, um, you know, you know the type. <laughs> and uh, who do I feel more comfortable with? Well, the, you know, Roger Hedgecock in his uh, member members only jackets. He had his members only jacket on and and his megaphone, and uh, and I just remember this old lady just just shouting, and she was just vile. 
And that was my perception of it, okay? And um, um, that's how I became sympathetic. I mean, that was one of the early, uh, early um, uh, indicators of where I was going to lean, right or left. Um, so anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Robert Putnam and, uh, and what he had to say to the Brits. And, um, um, and there's some interesting stuff about trends, is that uh, one of the places where the big groups are happening in the U.S. are the mega churches. And the mega churches don't ask a whole lot, and they offer a lot of variety and cool stuff to do. They've got like a mountain biking for Jesus and things like that. So people join up, and then as they move up in the organization, their participa participation becomes more intense. Um, the other phenomenon is that's bringing us together are, are uh, things like Facebook and, and MySpace. I don't participate in any, any of those. Obviously, though, I do participate in YouTube. And, uh, and I did one of my videos I was talking about, the sense of community that I, that I get from YouTube. So, I mean, that, that was a little bit that. Maybe there's something to, uh, for food for thought there. Um, one thing that's been going on lately, and is on a, another topic, is I've been unable to send messages uh, through my uh, page. And uh, I don't know if anybody else has encountered this, but I try to send a message to somebody and I get these like red letters across the top. Message failed. Um, some good news. Some good news for all, for all you Mike Savage fans. Mike Savage has put his dog Teddy back on his webpage. So now you can click on Teddy's Corner and you can see pictures of Teddy again, and which is which is really nice to see this tender side of a man that comes across as so hard and angry, unless he's talking about food. <laughs> um, hey, you know, if you guys want me to do my Mike Savage uh, uh, imitation again for you someday, I'm I'm working on it. I'm working on that Brooklyn accent, but I live on the West Coast, so I don't encounter too many Brooklyn type people. Um, and I want to give a special hello to uh, to uh, Whiskey Man. Right on. I um, I mean uh, that's one of the people that's made me feel part of the community. And uh, and Bobo McGraw, and of course, uh, yeah, Bobo McGraw, the Irishman, um, and um, D R S N K, uh, who was one of the very first people that welcomed me to YouTube and was one of the first people that let me know that I was all right. He posted, he posts some um, clips of Michael Savage and um, and so that was a natural end because my very first video was about Michael Savage and how I thought he might be a closet, closet uh, homosexual. I don't really feel that way anymore. I don't really care, uh, but it still keeps coming up. People post stuff because Michael Savage is definitely a draw. I mean, if you want to get some people to respond to your videos do something on Mike Savage apparently get some riled up and man I've been doing some stuff with people getting riled up the global warming stuff oh man I feel like I'm beating my head against a wall on that one um, and now I will welcome my latest subscribers uh, proud American 8 proud American 8 this guy's a character and uh, and you know I like him his views are, are, are much different than mine, but I like him. Um, and Global Loving Great Village, Jack Dup Duples one. Um, this guy has some pretty funny videos. Uh, Dark Tower Jill, um, Drogo Meta Tolocles. Um, you can go to my page and, and look at my subscriber list, but this guy has some, some interesting videos on there. I haven't had a chance to watch them all yet. Um, Simply Complex 3, Nordic Jawa, and Fischl M. Fiscal M. S. N. O. N. <laughs> Sorry if I didn't uh, get the name right, but um, but I, I welcome you. And I've got I've broke past 30. I think I'm up like in 37 or something now. So that's awesome, awesome for me. And thank you. Um, so I guess that, that about does it. This is Citizen Kong wishing you all the best. Cheers.